You're listening to this week's episode of the Vacation Rental Business in Today's World podcast. You're about to start transforming your business and life with the information found here. We interview some of the greatest and most influential minds in the vacation short-term rental industry and supporting businesses. The information found here is a combination of brain science, transformational thinking, safety and loss prevention, and vacation short-term rental knowledge and experiences all rolled into one to help you and your business to achieve levels you never thought possible. I am glad you are here, and now please welcome your host, Eric Thibodeau. Hello, everyone. We're here with uh, Dana Lubner. Welcome, Dana. Hi, Eric. I'm so glad to be here with you. Thanks. I appreciate you coming in, and we're going to talk some about advocacy and vacation rentals, and uh, looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it as well. It's one of my favorite topics. So where are you right now? I am speaking to you from my place in Denver, Colorado, where I've been living for the last, say, 13 years. Great. And I'm in uh, Gulf Shores, Alabama. We're here working on our properties in our vacation rental business and uh, opening up a new property. Uh, Started today's Thursday, yesterday. Oh, my goodness. Congratulations. Yeah. We're excited and uh, getting to moving along and also working on some hurricane uh, damage uh, properties here uh, still since uh, September. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably a, a process that you're familiar with. Yes. Too much. Uh, looking forward to, to getting our places back online. Awesome. So uh, can you give us a little introduction about yourself and an idea of your background and experiences in vacation rentals? Absolutely. So as we said, my name is Dana Lubner. And around three years ago, I left the world of marketing and advertising and joined my brother running a short term rental property management company called Effortless Rental Group. Um, At the time, we had properties across the country. Uh, And then since I'd say 2019, we decided to be Colorado only. So just focused on our backyard. Um, I think that helped us hone in on our branding and our messaging and being able to really put hands and eyes on the property in real time in ways that was just harder to do when we had a larger spread of properties. Uh, Fast forward to today, and I am head of advocacy at Rent Responsibly. And in that timeline, in between joining my brother's property management company and now today working with Rent Responsibly, um, I became a full-on advocacy nerd. And I say that with excitement and enthusiasm because while the word is oftentimes, um, I'd say a showstopper or a conversation stopper, I think advocacy is super exciting and super powerful. So um, over the last three years, I started and am now the president of our local advocacy group, the Mile High Hosts. And then last year, I launched a podcast called How to Save Your Vacation Rental Business with Matt Landau. So uh, I am eating, sleeping, and breathing the topic we're going to dive into today. That's great. And I did, I did listen to the podcast uh, as they were coming out. So it was a great, great podcast, great series. I enjoyed it. Thank you so much for tuning in. You're welcome. So uh, do you own any vacation rentals now? I actually don't. I sometimes ask myself, how am I so passionately involved in such an advocate for sustainable regulations when I don't own one myself? Usually it takes, you know, the fear of personal loss to wake people up, to get them to dedicate and devote their lives to something Uh, that feels like quite the uphill battle. And so I at times ask myself, how am I so into this when I don't actually have my own vacation rental? But my husband, Andy, and I did a goal setting dinner uh, on Tuesday of this week over some sushi. And one of the goals we had talked about was acquiring our own vacation rental this year. So I do see it in the near future for us. It's great. Yeah, we we love ours. uh... And uh, look forward to hearing about the ones that you're purchasing. Yes, I do too. <laughs> so in the vacation rental business, so would you say that this is something you came out and just started doing? Or you said, uh, 
or you kind of stumbled into it. A lot of people seem to just stumble into this great business. I, I, I really find that so, so interesting, I guess, is the word I'll choose. How many of us really have stumbled into it? I think, um, you know, as we all hear, vacation rentals have been around for years and years and years, but this sort of DIY, um, super easy to get started mentality, I think, uh, has been born in the last few years. And, you know, my brother, when he started his company, Taylor, at Effortless Rental Group, he was doing it for somebody else. And he saw the opportunity to improve upon the services that that company was delivering and said that there's so much um, that he could do that he decided to start his own company. So I stumbled into it uh, when I had decided that my, my job I was doing in marketing and advertising needed to shift and reached out to my family and my brother said, hey, come work with me. Uh, I think you'll love this. It's really exciting. It's a new industry. There's so much opportunity. And so I fell into it by an opportunity to work with family. So it, like everyone else, I, I've fallen in love with it and I drink the Kool-Aid and I'm happy about it. Great. So what is advocacy and why is it so important for our vacation rental industry? So I think the way that I would best describe what advocacy is, is the idea of coming together around a certain idea, whether it's a belief or a policy or something that a community can say that in agreement, they believe is something worth pursuing. So, you know, there's all kinds of advocacy out there, but when it relates to vacation rentals, I think it's best described when we think about what does a sustainable future look like? for the industry or for the community. And I think, you know, when we look and frame the word advocacy as a battle where we have to raise arms and go to war, I think it does more damage than good. And so I think the way that we can best frame vacation rental advocacy is taking into consideration all of the voices, all of the stakeholders, all of the members of the community that our industry touches and making sure that their voice is part of that collaborative outcome. That's good, yeah. I think that's the thing is collaboration to achieve what you're looking for. And uh, it's never too early to start, right? I mean, I think if we all, for all of us that have had some sort of regulatory battle, I can say without a doubt, hands down, I wish I got involved sooner. Like, I don't think anybody regrets starting an advocacy journey or at least opening up their mind to what they could you know accomplish or getting ahead of the ball any bit sooner and I think most of us are starting in a place where it's that reactive mode because all of a sudden there's a threat to something we've built as our livelihoods right and and what I'm trying to promote throughout this series is let's be proactive in in everything we're doing and advocacy is is just one of those pieces uh Let's start now rather than wait until we have some trouble or, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the greatest lessons I've taken away from being proactive with something is that you have more choices about what direction you're going to take something versus reactive. Usually when you're in reactive mode, you only have a couple different ways you can respond where if you're being proactive, you're kind of driving the ship and you can go in more directions when you're in that mindset. That's yeah. Well said. I, I agree. It's like driving a ship and we all like to be in charge, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so what, what, uh, what basically ignited this need or desire for advocating in vacation rentals? Was it one thing or a series of, of things? Absolutely. So I think for most people to get involved with advocacy, because it's oftentimes not a paid gig, you know, you're volunteering hours that are already stretched thin. Um, You're having to pull resources and oftentimes uh, really trying to muster up engagement from others. It can be a really exhaustive task. So I'd say oftentimes people are not looking to do it just for fun usually there's something that they have a fear around uh, loss, whether it's 
the potential to lose the ability to short-term rent your properties. Or for us in Denver, it was seeing mugshots in our local news of hosts that were being charged as criminals for falsifying their primary residence. We were hearing stories about other hosts that were saying they felt they were being followed by Denver City you know, undercover police officers. Uh, just this really bad and poor misrepresentation of the larger hosting community. When we realized the headlines of the newspaper were starting to paint a, a narrative that was gonna do a lot of damage to the local hosting community, we realized, oh my goodness, there's no no more time to sit back and watch this, uh, you know, horror story, which it felt at the time unfold. We really need to be proactive. So it was an inciting incident for me personally, and the realization that no one else was going to do it for us, and that if we didn't get involved and bring a group together, hosting could all together get become a band, you know function of our Denver local community. And we didn't want to see that happen. So the idea of a loss of a personal family business to me was what really got me involved. And then we reached out to other property managers locally and said, we need to get together. Let's, you know, put down the competitor hat and let's sit around a table and talk about what we can do and share stories and build a bond between each other that we could then identify a goal that we all wanted to work towards. So I think that's probably a common story. If you spoke to other folks in the space, it was um, the, the idea of loss that really is gonna make you wake up and, and jump in action. Right, interesting, good. Um, so can you share a story, Dana, about where advocacy was engaged before a problem arose and how impactful was it? I mean, these stories of times when advocacy was engaged before a problem happens are too few. Um, I'm hoping that with our conversation today, Eric, and with the podcast and with the work we're doing at Rent Responsibly, we can inspire more stories of proactive engagement. But an example that I have some firsthand experience working with of this taking place is the Dallas destination. So at Rent Responsibly, part of what we do is we're super hands-on with the way we help support destinations in their alliance building and advocacy building efforts. So we, in Dallas right now, short-term rental regulations don't exist. And it's been kind of mind-blowing to see that there is an opportunity to help shape the way that those regulations unfold by bringing out the positive stories of professional hosting behavior and making sure that, you know, some of the bad actor stories are put into perspective. So when they say there's been complaints, um, equipping those uh, local individuals to understand how they can do a freedom of information, a FOIA uh, request for public information or for 311s and getting to the heart of how many complaints are really happening in a destination and, and providing education to the city council members that will therefore uh, creating that ordinance. So uh, I think all too often we're, we're engaging when it's in reaction and Dallas is ahead of the ball there. And so there's just so much excitement and enthusiasm that's in that local community where they're not already experiencing advocacy fatigue. And they're really excited knowing that they can shape in a positive way how regulations unfold. That's great. That's a great story. And I think we, we learn a lot through stories and hearing that, you know, this can be achieved uh, in a proactive manner, I think is excellent. And I, I hope we have more of these to share as we go forward. Me too. So now we're going to talk about the one we know we have a lot about. And those are the ones where, and similar to your story in situation is something's happened and now we're going to experience a loss or we're going to experience something uh, negative for our business and the industry. What's a story there? And, and maybe we know there's different outcomes all the time. You don't win every battle. So uh, maybe give us a couple, one where we win and one where we had to stop and regroup. Totally. I think it becomes really challenging when there's no advocacy group formed. There's no alliance. There's no one-stop hub of 
quickly disseminating information where we need people to act. Um, I think getting into an advocacy mindset doesn't come second nature to a lot of people. And I think advocacy can be a word that people get intimidated by and they feel like, gosh, I don't, this isn't an area that I can add value. So they just choose to not engage or to hope that somebody else does. And so a specific destination where Unfortunately, I think that the the coming together happened later than um, I would have been ideal. Is basically, you know, it wasn't a total loss, but in Santa Fe, so uh, rent responsibly, we've engaged with the local community members in Santa Fe. Santa Fe is a tourist destination. It's a really cool community. I'm a big fan. Every time I've gone to Santa Fe, it's just it has this unique charm um, and kind of like this magical spiritual vibe to it. Um, and, and so it has a really great group of people, but the reality is that they came together after an ordinance was already, or an ordinance change was already being proposed. So council members had already been gathering stories from all of the anti short-term rental folks, and they had already started to look at what other destinations were doing. And so it's challenging when there are examples of really, really strict regulations that are out there and city council members are doing their research and they want to start replicating what's been done in other destinations. And so Santa Fe has been an incredible community to work with and and the work that we've done there has been really powerful, but unfortunately the ball was already in motion and the ordinance proposal was already written and city council was already hearing all of the negative feedback from the community that was not in support. So it was, they say that it's hard to change your mind once you have a negative perception of something to positive. It's a lot easier to change your mind once you have something, a positive perception to negative. So the negative shift is, is heavy as a heavy lift. So that's why in destinations where regulations are not already a topic, promoting and building relationships with media outlets and uh, news sources about the incredible stories and unique offerings that short-term rentals and vacation rentals bring to the community members and how they help foster up, uh, you know, that local multiplier effect for spend. Those getting ahead of the ball is a great way to start building out that positive narrative before some negative narrative starts taking a headline and and grows legs. Exactly. And, and, you know, what, what made me just think back in my life and career, perception rules more than reality, right? And and if you're a fact-based person, it just, it just, it's awful for you because you're used to dealing in facts and uh, perception somehow just gets in the way and takes over. I've seen it firsthand so many times with the recycled uh, language used in advocacy, even when they've been disproven, the narratives of negativity that circulate through the space, even when disproved, it's incredibly hard to change it up. So I totally agree with this perception that you've outlined. Yeah, exactly. So that was uh, a situation that started out not well, but ended up uh, okay. Yeah, well, the the ordinance ended up passing, but there was amendments made. So it wasn't considered a total loss. And I think the way that one defines a win or a loss needs to be put into perspective. Because if it's if it's only a win, if you get everything that you want, that's not good. You're not going to find a lot of wins. And like we said a couple minutes ago, there's a lot of compromise and collaboration that needs to take place for sustainability in vacation rentals. And so you, it's sort of, I'd say a reframing of wins and losses. And so while they didn't get everything or the top of the list items in this ordinance um, amended, they still did get some wins and they still realize that it's not over when an ordinance is voted on and that the efforts of advocacy go long beyond a vote. Right, exactly. Yeah, and it's, and maybe we also have, to, yeah, exactly. Looking at how we declare wins and losses, uh, it's not a sporting event. It's, you know, we, we should always look for the wins because they're there, right? Absolutely. Great. Good stories. And I think we can learn from those. And I think it's, uh, I think it just shows the, the varied range of how we need to be looking at uh, our advocacy and which situation we're in. So what are some of the top reasons or situations where, which contribute to issues with vacation rentals? So somehow, you know, things get started and say, why, why are we having to do this? So what, what are some of the igniters that say, okay, 
now we want to regulate short-term rentals more heavily. I think, unfortunately, when you don't have control of the narrative, the narrative will will run away with one or two stories of a bad actor taking place. I think the majority of the hosting community wants to be in compliance, wants to be professional. They care deeply about having, you know, repeat business and being able to continue this livelihood that they've created. And so, you know, with anything, I think when it comes to getting eyeballs on an article or um, a certain voice that soon gets magnified and amplified, it's typically those negative stories that then take over. And so unfortunately, I think with short-term rentals, when they first were born, it kind of, I, I, I look at more of the non-traditional markets where people aren't used to second homes being rented out. You know, if you go to a vacation rental destination, like a beach community, a lot of people there are second home, third home owners. Some people do live there year round, but it's a mentality that the local economy has grown to rely on of tourism activity is the way that our destination works. And so they're used to having influxes, high season, low season, and so forth. But in destinations like Denver, for example, people were not used to living next to short-term rentals. And in the very beginning days when it was super wild, wild west and unregulated, I think the lack of technology, the lack of wherewithal, the lack of focus on professionalizing the way we operate resulted in bad actor behavior, whether it was um, neglect or unintentional or simple lack of, uh, lack of knowing that it was happening. So we think of party houses and trash and parking issues. All of these topics have now become forefront of the way that we discuss how do we, how do we set up our property for success? How do we mitigate you know, neighborhood impact? And so I think unfortunately those, were, those narratives were started and even when those, those issues have been fixed, whether it was now people can upgrade the size of their trash bin or now they use noise monitoring devices like Noise Aware or Minute. Those stories of negativity sit in the minds of the local community, even if those problems have been fixed and no longer exist. Yes. And so I think it's a lack of uh, knowledge of the community. And the reality is we live in a very tech-driven digital world. And people, I think, are uncomfortable with that. And so it's very easy to say, you know, tech, uh, technology combined with somebody you, you don't know creates a ma massive amount of fear about short-term rentals being on your block. So maybe a series of uh, events or activities. Absolutely. And then, it, you know, they make gain then to sing praises. So you think about a Yelp review, are you more likely to, people are more likely to share the negative experience they had than you know, quietly leaving with like a very happy five-star experience. Not everyone, but those people are the ones that are also reaching out to their city council members. And so when you have local residents of a community reaching out to city council, city council is there to serve the community and they start to get this perception of short-term rentals being a problem. So I think that's oftentimes how we get to the point of we need to regulate the industry or we need to revisit regulations and make them even tighter because the way that they um, currently exist in our community is still causing problems. So yeah, I think it's a series of events and perceptions that are kind of ingrained in people's minds, even after they've improved their behavior within the community. Right. And even so, and you have these series of events, but as professional property managers and owners, we need to take ownership of that and control those actions and behaviors. Not always somebody else, it's us. Oh my goodness. And the idea of taking ownership and helping out others I mean, even if you know about the best way to operate a property, helping out somebody else within your own local community helps you as a whole. It helps the industry. It helps the perception of the industry. Um, it helps the way that guests experience their stay because if they have a horrible time um, and get harassed by a neighbor at one short-term rental that's not yours, they may never choose to stay at a short-term rental again because they may be traumatized by that experience. And taking that responsibility is the first step in fixing the problem and then helping out others. Right. I agree hundred percent. So we just can't sit aside. We gotta, we have to get involved. So exactly. 
how can we begin to look at advocacy in our own areas and address these or similar issues? What can we do? What can we start with? I love this question because it's so easy, I think, just to get involved from in the first place. Everybody has a different amount of time they can dedicate to this. And what we often see is those with the least amount of time choose to volunteer themselves to, to fight the fight or to get involved and roll their sleeves up. So the very first thing I recommend that everyone does if they're not already aware if an advocacy group exists is to, to, to just do a Google search, to reach out, to reach out to Rent Responsibly, to go into one of the many Facebook groups about advocacy, reach out to me personally and ask, does an advocacy group exist in my area? And if it does, Find out who's running that advocacy group and say, hey, I'd love to attend a meeting. I want to learn more about what you're doing. And I guarantee you that you will make that advocacy group leaders day because they are looking for people that say, I want to learn how I can get involved and how I can help because there are little things that you can do and there are big things. And we're always looking for more people that have energy to bring into the effort because it does take a lot of energy. If an advocacy group does not exist in your area, the easiest thing to do is to find other hosts in the community or other property managers. Property managers have a lot at stake to lose and they often are, you know, more, more than just a one person show. So they can kind of share the burden of, you know, getting involved across their staff. So finding other people in the community and saying, hey, let's get together and let's talk about what we are seeing in our own community, where we can be proactive, what do we need to be reactive around, and what are some goals that we want to accomplish. Um, that's the best way to get involved and, and be ahead of the ball if you can. And so how has is, how is COVID impacted advocacy? Has it created more of a need, less of a need? No real impact. Oh, gosh. Um, so I think COVID has at first, I felt at first, I felt really frustrated about how COVID was impacting our industry. I was feeling like this is unfair. Short term rentals were deemed as non essential, and hotels were able to continue to operate. It was like, I kind of wanted to hit my head against the wall being like, how is this even possible? Like, where are these, who are these decision makers and what rock are they living under? Because this couldn't be further from the truth. But what I really, with time, which usually time is our best friend, I realized that this is, this has almost been a gift because it's forced a conversation that had to happen. And it was a matter of time of whether, when it was, it wasn't a matter of if it was going to happen, it was when it was going to happen. And I think that short-term rentals have rebounded and been deemed as a lodging preference of choice, especially during a pandemic. And we've all heard about first line responders needing to safely stay in a space where they're not traveling up and down an elevator and they have a kitchen to cook in or families that want to get together, but they want space to spread out. So they don't rent four hotel rooms next to each other. They're able to stay in a home that has a living room and a big kitchen table. I mean, my husband and I, we live in a, a condo here in Denver, and I can tell you that we've gotten really tired of our own four walls. And so the idea of going to another vacation rental has provided some sanity reprieve for us that I think is starting to become more commonplace and more, I, it, I'd say, education that has taken place in conversations with city officials. Like if it wasn't for this pandemic, I proposed a secondary license type in Denver with my advocacy efforts at the Mile High Host. And if it wasn't for the pandemic, I don't think we would have been able to make as many of the positioning arguments as to why it made sense and why it actually is helping bring money into local communities where you know, if short-term rentals can't exist, they're not seeing that type of traveler activity or demand. Yeah, so definitely time. I, I agree. Time kind of allows us the space to think and breathe and recapture our thoughts and get the right message out. So that's great. It's good. Sometimes we can bring some positive out of things that aren't the best. That's what you hope for. And in, in a time where it's uh, you feel like your whole world is upside down, that's you got to be able to find those silver linings and the good side of the situation. Absolutely. So what are some of the challenges you're facing in you and your business uh, today as we go forward? So right now, the, my focus, while I'm still involved with Effortless Rental Group, um, I'm, my main focus right now is rent responsibly. And so 
some of the challenges that we face is that we want to help everyone and anyone that reaches out to us. But the way in which we currently are providing support is a super hands-on approach. So, you know, we're running meetings, um, we're building out leadership committees, we're doing workshops, um, we're doing things that really require full-time attention. And so one of the challenges that we are looking to you know, improve upon in 2021 is building out resources that are accessible through software that anyone can use. So, you know, a step-by-step -step standard operating procedure, SOP, um, blueprint of how to do advocacy that kind of, you know, in a lot of ways complements what our educational podcast series that I did with Matt, but that dives into these ideas and these, uh, uh, the way that we approach advocacy in a super specific detailed manage, manner, kind of think of like a checklist that you follow and then, you know, resources that you can do use yourself to hit the ground running. So I think scaling is something that's always important to keep in mind in any of the ways that we build out our business. And so that's the lens we're looking through at Rent Responsibly is what we're doing is this scalable and how do we identify markets where we can roll up our sleeves and get involved versus a market where we would say, hey, we've got these, this incredible library of resources that are going to help you build out your group and hit the ground running. That's good. I like that. And uh, I like where you're building this such that property managers and owners can take this and start using it. And uh, they're not experts in this. And so they're going to be able to make it simple and then call upon uh, your team at Rent Responsibly and other local groups to help uh, improve. So I think it's an excellent, excellent path forward. I like I'm it. super excited. Great. So what's one of your big goals for 2021? Um, you know, when I think about 2021, I feel like it's a new year with lots of possibilities. I think there's something special about going from one year into the next. And it's sort of this uh, collective reflection on what did we accomplish last year and what do we want to accomplish in this new year? And last year was such a bizarre year. And, you know, 2021 has started out with a lot of those lingering bizarre feelings and energies. But I think that there's so much more potential to be uh, intentional with what we want to accomplish. And so I have my own personal goals for my, uh, my life. Like I had shared the idea of getting and acquiring my own vacation rental with my husband. But I think about the goals of bringing advocacy to more people and making it something that's not a word that people shy away from. I think you know, being intimidated by getting involved can stop a lot of people. And I, my goal is to make advocacy accessible, practical, actionable to everyone. So getting to chat with you and share the work that we're doing at Rent Responsibly, um, you know, Matt Landau and Stuart and I are talking about what's next for us. What, where can we take our advocacy efforts to the next level? Um, I just want to see more and more people say that advocacy is part of their community approach because through advocacy efforts, we build community. And I think we're craving more than ever a sense of community. Right. I agree. And I look forward to great things this year and continuing to grow and learn more about advocacy. Is there anything else that uh, you want to mention that I haven't asked you about? Well, I'd say, you know, keep keeping an eye on ways in which you can lift each other up. I, I, I briefly referenced this before, but we're, we're only as good as our next door neighbor. And when we think about being the best in class, I think it's this mentality of supporting each other. So when 2021 was on, the, you know, on the horizon for us, uh, we really wanted to say, how can we make advocacy accessible and how can we lift each other up in the way that we operate? Because the professionalizing of our industry is without a doubt going to have a direct impact on advocacy and the way our industry and community is perceived by others that are not directly embedded in short-term rentals. So I think that's a great way to do advocacy is just thinking about how you can be a positive contributor to our local communities. That's great. Yes. And so how can people reach you or get in contact with you for your, uh, your wisdom, knowledge, and support? Absolutely. So the best way to reach me is at help at Dana Lubner, D-A-N-A-L-U-B-N-E-R.com. So help at Dana Lubner.com. 
that will uh, notify me, you know, via email that you're reaching out. Um, and then we can chat about your specific problem and find out if there are advocacy groups or resources in your area. You know, a lot of the things that people have done in other destinations can be replicated in your destination. So if you're starting to think about advocacy and you feel like it's a huge task to take on, just know that other people in other destinations have done a lot of that groundwork for you and they're happy to share those resources. And that's that's the toolkit that Rent Responsibly is building out so we can make it easy for you to jump in and get involved. Great, Dana. I appreciate that. And I encourage everybody to listening to reach out to Dana. And I think this message is applicable for, for our whole audience. We have property managers, we have owners, we have realtors. And you know, if you're an investor who's looking at investing in real estate and vacation rentals, I think this topic is really applicable uh, as well. So appreciate it. And uh, Dana, thanks a bunch for uh, joining us today and, and sharing some of your knowledge and wisdom. We appreciate Absolutely. It was so great to connect with you, Eric. And I'm so glad to be able to share the word of advocacy with your with your listeners. Great. Thanks, Dana. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to Safer VR's podcast with Eric Thibodeau. If you enjoy this, I would love you to join my Facebook group, The Safer Vacation Rentals, for more of the same. You can also join our email list at www.safervrs.com.